Today I am going to tell you a strange tale from the northwest of England about a bunny, a spectral bunny, or maybe it was a boggart, a wicked boggart. You make up your own mind. In the northwest of England, in Lancashire, is a thoroughly modern town that still has a distinct atmosphere of the Industrial Revolution, the Victorian era that saw the industrial growth of many northern towns and cities that were connected to the wool and cotton spinning trades. A place once full of dark satanic mills that was written of now is vibrant and multicultural with all the shops, bustle and bright lights of today's time. And yet there are ghosts of the past that still walk the once cobbled streets, dressed in the wooden, leather and metal clogs, woolen shawls and flat caps so renowned of of the Lancashire mill workers. It is called Rochdale, and today I will tell you just one of the strange tales that comes from this once industrious mill town. Rochdale's history stretches way back. It was recorded in the Doomsday Book. It has been there a very, very long time. It has seen its rises and its falls as all post-industrial towns have and still do today. It was the place of the birth of the cooperative movement that gave more power to the workers and spread its legacy around the world. The town holds many stories of just regular working people's lives. The struggle to put food on the table, keep the home warm and a roof over the head of the family. And yet, it is not all industrial memory and modernity. On the outskirts, there are majestic soft-watered rivers that flow down beautiful tree-lined gorges, bringing the perfect soft water needed for fulling cloth and spinning cotton. There are abandoned railway tracks that you can follow, the viaduct of one of these standing majestic and proud above the deep, shadowed and fairy-like Healy Dell. It is a town surrounded by beautiful Lancashire countryside and hidden secret places. In this town, full of the memories of the Victorians and Edwardians, there is a church. It sits to one side of the town centre, on Cheatham Street, nearby an area called Toad Lane a very pretty historical part of the town that looks like it could be straight from a Dickens novel. This church is called St. Mary in the Baum. It dates from 1911, but replaced a much earlier church that had fallen into disrepair. The Baum part of the name refers to balm, as in lemon balm and balm mint that once grew all around the church in the 1700s, a place that drew herbalists and those seeking the balms for therapies and cures. Indeed, on Toad Lane itself, there is a quaint and award-winning pub called The Baum, famed for its fine ales and craft beers. The church building itself is quite a harsh-looking thing, quite gothic, not a pretty church that one would think of as an English chapel, but instead it is austere, quite harsh looking. It makes one think of the difficult lives of the mill workers that would once have worshipped there. The building's soot stained and you could close your eyes and almost hear the clatter of the Lancashire clogs worn by the congregation on cold streets gathering here on Sundays. It is this stern looking building set in place by the side of the town that holds the story of the Baum Rabbit, a ghostly snow white rabbit reputed to be a boggart by the locals 
that haunted this place. The Baum Rabbit struck fear and dread into the hearts of the people of Rochdale who had to pass through this chapel area in the night, a place of damp and cold, of dirt and grime, smog spewing from the mill chimneys. It would be seen flitting around the chapel yard, a plump thing, strong, supernaturally clean and with fur so perfect and so white, unnatural in the constant soot and dirt that clung to every surface and permeated the air of Rochdale. The coal and steam powered mill chimneys that stood out from the Rochdale landscape like giant brick tree trunks growing from the many small houses there spewed blackness and filth into the atmosphere. And yet, the Baum Rabbit, well, it was the purest white as newly fallen snow and its eyes glowed as red as the brightest rubies. People who saw this spectral rabbit would find it cleaning its whiskers, or standing on its hind legs periscoping, or bounding from place to place. And the other thing it would do, as all rabbits are wont to do of course, is dig. Digging in the leaf litter around the church building industrious in the extreme, as though searching for something lost. And how did they know this was not a real flesh and blood lagomorph? Well, anyone who tried to approach it would find that it would disappear into thin air, and so no person from the town could investigate the Boggart Bunny further. It was rumoured that the Baum Rabbit loved the sounds of the wailing cats, of which there were many in Victorian and Edwardian Rochdale. At the sound it could be seen listening, as though to the most beautiful music that would work its ghastly noise through the gas lamp lit swirling smogs. Of course, people being people, Many of the men of the town made brave after partaking of a few beverages of the emboldening kind had decided to try and shoot the spectral rabbit. But even this did nothing. A shot would be fired, the aim perfectly accurate, and yet the shot did nothing to the rabbit. On the contrary, it seemed to like the sport of confusing the shooter, appearing here, being shot, appearing there, a challenging duel, and it was said that the smell of the gunpowder was as delicious to it as a pinch of snuffies to an old woman. The townsfolk eventually accepted that this strange creature was not a real flesh and blood rabbit, but was indeed a spectre, or a boggart, a supernatural thing. And the place it inhabited was said by some to be a very obvious place for it to haunt. Indeed, before the original Baum Chapel had been built, the locals would say in darkened parlours and smoking pub snugs, a deed of horror had been committed on that land. And yet no one would say or admit what this dark transaction had been. But suffice to say, it was bad, it was evil. And so the spectral rabbit had obviously gravitated there to haunt that spot. The Boggart Bunny was really quite well behaved for a paranormal creature of this type. It never harmed anyone, it only frightened the locals with its peculiar behaviour, its supernatural visage and the disappearances and reappearances. The local people did not believe it was demonic either, merely a strange and peculiar thing and as such was better to be avoided if at all possible. Scary, but not aggressive. 
Over time, sightings of the Baum rabbit dissipated. Maybe it had completed whatever task it was sent to do, but every now and then, even to this day, there is still the odd sighting of a strange white rabbit. I will leave this episode with a poem written by a local Rochdale man, a Rochdale poet. The unfortunate chap had to travel through St Mary's churchyard every night on his way home. Frustrated and annoyed by the boggart rabbit and obviously a man quite afraid of spectral bunnies. Confound that rabbit! I wish some chap would grab it and stop its nightly habit. Confound that rabbit! Confound its head and eyes, confound its legs and thighs, confound it otherwise, confound that rabbit! Dogs rush out and squeeze him, worry, toss and tease him, that is if you can seize him, confound that rabbit! So friends, there you have the very peculiar tale of Rochdale's Baum Rabbit. Was it a ghost? or a boggart as the locals thought. That part of Lancashire is full of boggart tales, I know this. I am originally from not too far from Rochdale and from as young as being a little girl I have always collected strange local tales from different places. And rabbits. Well, this episode is dedicated to our very own Baum Rabbit our very spoiled house bunny, Piwacket. Truly the brains of all our pet family. Naughty and sweet, all at the same time. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please tap subscribe if you are enjoying the channel and thank you so much to those who already have. Your support means a great deal. I'm very, very grateful. Keep an eye out for bunnies, dear friends, when travelling around, especially ones that just don't seem quite, well, right. Until next time, dear friends, keep well, brightest of blessings, and remember, don't play with the fairy folk, or you may end up in one of my folk tales yourself.